Hello, welcome back to my studio. Well, today we're doing a gouache demonstration. I'm going to show you a lovely little summer scene that I took some photos of recently and put into a bright, sunny little gouache painting. Otherwise, just keeping busy. What, what with this whole lockdown thing, and we've just had uh, two more weeks added on to our lockdown, so we're all a bit annoyed about it. But, you know, what has to be done has to be done, and we'll get on with it. Spend a bit of time, enjoy the video, and if you're inspired to do some painting yourself, why not share it with me, share your painting, put it on Instagram, just tag me in at Malcolm Dewey Fine Art, and I'd love to give you a shout out as well for the paintings you do. Um, joining me in the studio, that is Poppy. There you go. And joined by none other than her partner in crime, the little Yorkie, decided to leave. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the painting demonstration. So this is the scene. One you, you may be familiar with if you've watched some of my demonstrations before. I've just sketched it out very roughly, getting out my gouache paints and going to start off with a wash just to get the block in going, um, just get moving with your painting. So I'm using a bit of yellow ochre. I want a good warm tint to the painting. And I bring in a little bit of lemon yellow as well for the sunny, bright lit parts of the painting. Make a good start to your painting. Get your lights and darks established and your shadow pattern all in place. And then you can bring the next layers over it, the more opaque layers and uh, take your painting to its conclusion but it's getting in the good structure in the beginning transparent colors i'm not really using any white yet get those in and uh, once the foundation is set you can really have fun Notice using a large brush, this is a synthetic um, water media brush by uh, Dala Rowney, and that helps to get nice big shapes in very quickly. You don't want to spend a lot of time on this stage of the painting, you want to get big shapes of light and dark in as quickly as possible. I've now switched over to a memory point brush, very handy little brush this with a full bird tip. So long flats and full birds make very good paintings. Very easy to get in a lot of coverage at a quite good pace as well. Now you may be wondering what colors I'm using. Well, besides the yellow ochre and yellow lemon, I like to use ultramarine blue. That's what I'm using at the moment to get the strong darks. A bit of alizarin crimson and burnt sienna also contribute to good strong dark shapes. Um, I may use a little bit of um, red, but mostly it's alizarin crimson. And burnt sienna makes a good red in a landscape as well. Obviously titanium white is necessary for the highlights and opaque color. 
I've got a bit of orange on my palette, although I don't intend to really use it in this painting. And it's quite easy to mix that up as well with your yellow and alizarin crimson. Make a lovely deep orange. Another important color in my palette is cerulean blue, which is my cool blue. And I will use that in, especially in the sky colors and also in shade parts of the foliage where I want a cool blue that has a bit of transparency and visibility as well. And cerulean is a very nice color for that. This is quite an important stage of the painting because I want the road or the path to lead deep into the painting and sort of disappear into the mysterious beyond. And I need to have those distant colors bright but cool. It's very important. They must be cool so they lie down and go into the painting and not up through the top of the painting and can look quite weird. But in the foreground, warm, deep, um, rich color. So it comes up to the viewer and uh, you get that nice illusion of depth. Into these shadows I've brought a bit of alizarin crimson in to make a cool violet. Obviously violet is a complement to yellow so it really works nicely in a painting like this. A vertical element like this telephone pole makes a nice composition device just linking up the foreground into the top of the painting. It gives a nice sort of sense of completeness as well. Getting in that cool distant color. White is generally a very cool color. You may have to add in a little touch of yellow to warm it up so it's not too cold. A lot of artists wonder if I plan out the whole painting in every layer and all of these brush marks are calculated. And the answer to that is no, not at all. Um, I follow a process of working in mass shapes from big to small. And it's a balance of lights and darks and warm and cool color. Pretty much based, I think, on experience. I don't plan all of these little strokes. I just see where I need to break up some of the larger shapes drop in a few splashes of color where I need to do that and constantly assess as I go along. And this isn't a, an automatic process. You've got to keep standing back and evaluating and see where you need to give the painting some attention. So you can never check out. You've got to remain dialed in and keep an eye out for what needs to be done.
You can see that much of the painting is done in the early stages. Here I'm just refining shapes. Most of them were in place already. Something I also look out for is regularity of shape. If an organic shape is looking too regular or hard edged, I will go in and break things up a bit and make it a little bit more chaotic. Break through some of the hard edges, drop in a few um, colors, maybe soften an edge here or there. Here I'm just re-establishing some of the darks and bringing a few dark accents as well. It's not just highlights and dark accents very important. And now the light accents and we're almost done just getting a figure in get a sense of interest and a focal point and it also gives a bit of scale very simple very abstract just putting the shadow in to attach the figure to the surface bringing in a little bit more violet I think it just adds a welcome little zing of color. And I think, yeah, we're done. So let's sign it off, get the tape off, and uh, oh, yes, always one or two extra little touches. Yeah, a little bit of alizarin crimson. And uh, the painting's never finished. <laughs> Clearly, there's always something an artist wants to put in. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and got some inspiration to try out something yourself. Remember to share your paintings if you want. Tag me in on Instagram at Markham Dewey Fine Art, and I'd love to have a look and give you a shout out as well. Make sure you've subscribed. I've got the next video coming out next week, so don't miss that one as well. Until next time, cheers for now. Mm -hmm.